Would you please sit? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Chancellor of this university, it is my very great pleasure to welcome you to the ceremony for the Department of Allied Health Professions and Midwifery. I should begin by introducing the platform party, and I welcome on my immediate left, Professor Felix Konate Ahulu, who will be receiving an honorary doctorate of science. On my far left is Mrs. Jackie Kelly, Dean of the School of Health and Social Work. And on my right is Ms. Jo Stewart, Director of Marketing and Communications. At the table to my right is Mrs. Sharon Harrison Barker, the university's academic registrar who carries the university's mace. I would particularly like to welcome our graduates, their family and friends to this morning's ceremony. It is a big moment in the graduates' lives. I hope they will remember it as a milestone in their careers, but also as a day that they can look back with in, on with enjoyment. We will now proceed with the presentation of awards, and I have the greatest of pleasure in calling upon Ms. Stewart to read a citation for the conferment of an honorary degree on Professor Felix Konate Ahulu. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to read the citation for the presentation of the honorary award of Doctor of Science on Professor Felix Konuteahulu. Science is, in essence, a search for the truth. It is this search for truth that has driven Felix to make some very significant discoveries in the area of sickle cell disease. As a scientist, he is not afraid to challenge conventional wisdom if it conflicts with his own discoveries. But this has landed him in hot water at times, not least when he was assigned four bodyguards when appearing as a keynote speaker at the Martin Luther King Jr. Foundation's Award Banquet in Philadelphia in 2007. His pointing out the vital distinction between sickle cell trait and sickle cell disease was going to have huge implications for insurance companies, and the organizers were more than a little concerned for his safety. Felix's research in the area of sickle cell disease has been groundbreaking. He is the only known scientist to have traced hereditary disease in his own family all the way back to 1670 AD. Having grown up in a family where sickle cell disease was present, his knowledge of the disease even before he went to medical school in the UK was significant. His parents had sickle cell trait, which resulted in his siblings having the disease, although he himself has neither. Felix's personal experience and observations therefore qualified him well to question conventional thinking about the causes of sickle cell trait, and seeing the pain and struggles of his siblings has greatly informed the ways he views people with the condition. The sickle cell clinic in Ghana, of which he was the director at the Kolebu Hospital, was the largest in the world. In addition, he established the Kanuti Ahulu Genetic Epidemiology Sickle Cell Foundation in 2011 to provide counselling for sufferers as well as education and research. The importance of asking questions is something Felix has always been very keen to pass on to his own students, encouraging them to learn how to think rather than simply learning what to think in order to pass exams. This ties in with his passion for medical ethics, particularly in the area of genetics. Indeed, one of his caveats is, medicine without ethics is dangerous. Although this honorary doctorate is being awarded for Felix's involvement in the area of sickle cell disease, he has contributed significantly to other areas of work, including AIDS research, medical ethics, and tonal linguistics. He has been widely published, and a number of his articles have become the definitive studies in their field. Felix has also authored two books 
Of the first, What is AIDS? Professor Maya Angelou said that this is compulsive reading. I could not put it down. His second, The Sickle Cell Disease Patient, has been described as a commendable addition to medical literature. The contribution of Felix has been publicly acknowledged many times, among which was inclusion in a list of the 100 greatest Africans of all time. In this list, he keeps esteemed company with names such as Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, and Kofi Annan. Among many other distinguished awards, he has received the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Foundation Award for outstanding research in sickle cell anemia, and the African American Museum in Philadelphia Humanitarian Award in 2007 in recognition of his exceptional contribution to the people of Africa and to the world. Felix has a soft spot for St Albans. After qualifying at London University's Westminster Hospital School of Medicine, his second job was as house surgeon at St Albans City Hospital and he remembers this period in his career very fondly. 20 years later, in the 1980s, the hospital was privileged to count Felix as a locum physician in medicine for the elderly, and he has since made his home in Hertfordshire. And Felix has a very diverse range of other talents too. If you have a moment, do search YouTube for the Millennium Hymn he wrote. It's called Time Was Created and is well worth a listen. Chancellor, in recognition of outstanding achievement, I ask that you confer the honorary award of Doctor of Science upon Professor Felix Konuteyahulu. Now, I would like to ask Dr. Konate Ahulu to address us, please. Lord Salisbury, Chancellor of the University of Hertfordshire, Lord Ribeiro of Achimota and Ovington, and past president of the Royal College of Surgeons, graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, hearty congratulations to those who studied allied health professions, including midwifery, and have emerged so successful. Very well done. I sincerely wish you well for your future endeavors. Regarding myself, ever since I got the letter of the Vice Chancellor inviting me to receive an honorary Doctor of Science degree, one word has been uppermost in my head. And that word is gratitude. Allow me to explain. Exactly one week after leaving Achimota School on completing my Cambridge School Search Certificate exams in the Gold Coast, Ghana, my brother Jerry and I were struck by lightning on the football field. He was killed instantly. I was spared with only a facial burn. Jerry was 17 years of age. I was 19. Why Jerry and not me? I will never know the answer to that question, but one thing I do know, God Almighty has his hand on me. And my gratitude to him knows no bounds. Three and a half years after the lightning bolt, I did the 12 days voyage by boat, Elder Dempster Lines, to England to study medicine. Can you believe 
it, that I was taught by the best of the best. At London University's Westminster Hospital School of Medicine, the clinicians of royalty were my teachers, notably Sir Richard Bayliss, who became physician of Her Majesty the Queen. Any bedside manners I possess, I was taught by Sir Richard. I come to think of it, you had better have bedside manners with the head of the Commonwealth. My first job as a doctor was in London at the Bethnal Green Hospital. Walking into the ward, B3 side, I introduced myself to the nurse. Hello, I'm the new doctor, Felix. Quick came the answer. Hello, I'm Sister Moss. I then went on, so what can I call you? I asked, hopefully. You can call me Sister Moss, she replied. Actually, her name was Rosemary. I remember that Monday morning, June 15, 1959, as if it was yesterday, because on Easter Monday, 23rd April, 1962, Dr. Michael Lloyd-Jones married Felix and Rosemary Moss at Westminster Chapel. She is a staunch believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will see our 50th wedding anniversary, 2012 clip, if you Google Felix and Rosemary. I don't know how I could have achieved what I have done without you. You are, Rosemary, as beautiful today as when I first cast my eyes on you 59 years, three months ago. Rosemary. <laughs> Gratitude. I stress this again as I end. I owe so much more. I owe so much to more people than I have time to mention. People who made sacrifices for me like Professor Herman Lehman of Cambridge University, Professor Bela Ringingham, the Hungarian, Dr. Kobla Bedema, the Ghanaian laboratory expert, men who have been long dead, but whom I shall never forget. Also, institutions that put their weight behind me like Ghana Cocoa Marketing Board, Ghana's Managing Trustees of the Valco Fund, and University of Cape Coast in Ghana. I am grateful to them. Dear graduates, when you see someone struggling in life and you reach down and lift them up, you, and then you tell them, I will help carry your load, you have an impact beyond anything you can imagine. One big thing I learned coming to England in the early 1950s was that every privilege carried a responsibility. Never forget, dear ladies and gentlemen, that you have had privileges in life. Please, please learn to help those less privileged than you. If I have achieved anything, it is because I have been enabled by others to stand on the shoulders of giants. It has been a privilege to share this occasion with you. Lord Salisbury, I thank you. And I thank the University of Hertfordshire for the honor done me. And I thank God Almighty, in whose hands my very breath is for longevity. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Konate Ahulu.